I'm Michael Damiani, and I have finished Final Fantasy VII Intermission. I'm Maximilian Dude, and I have finished Final Fantasy VII Intermission. I am Brad Ellis, and I have finished Final Fantasy VII Intermission. This is your final warning. Spoiler mode begins now. Spoiler mode, spoiler mode, final warning, spoiler mode, activated. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a, a bonus spoiler mode, if you want to call it that, because this one is not for patrons only. This is going out for everybody, so enjoy it, because we're joined by Brad Ellis here. And special Yo. guest, Maximilian Dude, uh, the return, kind of like the reunion for the Easy Allies and yeah. Final Fantasy VII spoiler talk. Let's just use that. Yeah, let's go <laughs> Let's go with some reunion in the title of the video in some yeah. way, just to, mm -hmm. just for the excellent clickbait. Reunion theory, there we go. Um, Final Fantasy VII, Intergrade, and Intermission. Woo! Came out of nowhere in terms of dropped in the middle of, like, E3, right before E3, so... That's why it's taking a little bit of time to get around for us to do this. But, man, that DLC and that ending, I think, one, surprised by what was in the DLC. And then super shocked about how much they showed in the ending about what they were teasing. That just kept on going. I was like... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, what, what? <laughs> it's like three cutscenes. It was like the end of the freaking Return of the King, man. It was like Lord of the Rings. Was like, <laughs> yes, oh, that, that, that's the Eagles flying. All right, we're over Just now. Put Frodo nope. on the damn boat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm assuming both of you were pretty pleased with uh, what you got to play in the in intermission with you playing as Yuffie, seeing that perspective, and uh, with, you know, how, yeah. How, how did you feel about diving into extra content? You know, did you like what you saw? Did you like how Leafy handled? Did you like where they went with it? Uh, I guess I'll go first, and I'll, I'll let yeah. Brad give some impressions too. But yeah, just in terms of a uh, a DLC package add-on, uh, I think in summary, the thing that I can sort of like really quickly summarize in like one take felt more polished than the actual game itself sometimes. To the point where it felt like the devs were a, a bit more comfortable with Final Fantasy VII Remake and the direction and approach they were taking. And fans were, like, kind of happy with it for the most part, too. So they're able to do some kind of interesting stuff. Um, so much to the point where even, even the process of revisiting areas that had pretty boring side missions uh, as far as, like, additional content and stuff in the main game uh, when you're running around, is it technically Sector 7? Mm -hmm. um, and you're just, like, visiting all the people in Sector 7. It's cool world building, but it doesn't give you a lot to do except, like, hunt cats. And now I, I had a lot of fun with Yuffie looking for turtle flyers and playing Fort Condor. I'm like, wow, this is genuinely way more fun and way more engaging than before. And I think that was like, I think that was the goal of intermission was to fix a lot of the problems that core FF7 remake uh, kind of had. Uh, yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I think Sector 7 was way more interesting this time around. Like we obviously love Sector 7 because it is, you know, a part in the game. That's such a big part. But man, just, I loved Fort Condor. I just loved Fort Condor. It's so simple and it's not the most in-depth thing, but it was so fun just to see your little units go out on the board and playing against other uh, people from the main game. Like, <laughs> I'm one of the few people that actually kind of likes Roche, so I thought it was really fun to get to play him and see him, his like flamboyant nature kind of on Yuffie, so... Yeah, I was really pleased with that, and I think just navigating the world with Yuffie, they made it a little more interesting now that you can run on walls and going up the ropes. I think that was just little little steps that helped make navigating the world more exciting and Yuffie kind of stand out, and obviously the combat, I think. I think Yuffie's one of the best characters to play as in combat. I think they did the most with her. I feel like she has a lot more tech going on, and I hope they kind of give other characters more of that too. Yeah, I'll say about the exploration part, I really appreciated what they did with Intermission and making it... One of the criticisms I saw leverage against the main game uh, was that sometimes walking back and forth down these sort of corridor environments got a little repetitive, a little redundant oh, yeah. and boring mm -hmm. by adding in these kind of quick time style events, not quite mini game, but just something to interact with what it was like running along a wall, her doing it like flips on like those little like hook things that she could flip off of sliding down poles. They just, I think there was more of that between mm -hmm. each objective that made it felt a little bit more interactive and engaging from the user end. And I really appreciated that. 
Um, and wish there was a little bit more of that in the original game, honestly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and you, you, you think back to the original game, and it's like, when you're playing as Cloud or even the other characters, what is the most interactive elements in the environments, other than them just kind of like being pretty, is slowly walking. Yep. And that's like, oh, that's mostly it for... And, and Tifa kind of has a different thing where she's like, you know, doing this like pole thing from the, the final area where she has to like go from pole to pole to pole. And that's like, okay, but it's kind of like a different version of slowly walking. <laughs> like, now, yeah. like, Yuffie, they're like, okay, clearly the level design is not Square Enix's, like, most, um, like, appreciated standard in their games. Most of the level is there just to, like, kind of, kind of carry the characters and the action and the combat, and that is absolutely exemplified in 7 Remake. But at least in intermission, when you're running around as Yuffie, to me, like, the... The sort of bare bones levels don't come across as having that big of an issue like the original game or in seven v v seven remake vanilla so i kind of had i kind of had fun like it was just instead of like being like oh man this level's so boring i was more thinking of man this jazz music that is playing yes. while i'm running on walls with yuffie and throwing stuff at things and just looking for the next area i gotta go is actually great and yep. i'm not even thinking that this level's pretty bare bones and basic no it's yep. it, it's not front and center is what i'm trying to say Thank yep. her. Just a few little touches, I think, help a lot. And I I really hope they do that in the sequel, and it seems like they will. But I'm just I'm curious about how they would have Cloud interact with stuff, because I don't think Cloud's necessarily going to be doing ninja shit all the time. Sure. But he could be. He is a soldier, so who knows? Yeah. I mean, they might avoid this requirement for the most part if part two ends up being more open world and you know you have right. exploration back on the menu here of like this vast area to explore but it is yeah that's a good question because even yeah yuffie just being able to toss her ninja star or whatever weapon she has equipped because even that one segment i remember where you're going down that like, conveyor belt on that moving platform it was i thought it was like a mini game and it ended up being one because the end it actually tracked your score like destroying the boxes not yeah. the timed yep. one later on but the one where it's just like normal boxes just something yeah. as simple as that it, 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 it added a lot there and it's like maybe they just have to think of clever ways to do that with each of the characters like barrett's one barrett's got a gun so maybe mm -hmm. they do something similar with barrett at some point yeah and even like it's funny i think you go back and think of that barrett sequence and even that little little something right where barrett is doing something to the environment like didn't make you think that oh man that level was insanely like oh this is going on and on and on it did go on for a long time but you didn't really feel that way the same way you feel about like the final area in the game where it's like whoa we are still going <laughs> through hojo's bullshit here um so i i kind of hope they approach it in the same way that a lot of the original final fantasy 7 was where they add almost unnecessary interactivity to so many elements of the world in the original ff7 and they really try to carry that in 7 remake through mini games you know yeah or like the mini game part is the thing that brings you there but like cheesy little sneaking sequences like little things that have you interacting with the environment or other characters in ways that was a bit more nuanced than other rpgs at the time is really what made final fantasy 7 have a lot of character so if they could do that going forward, like just take the things that Yuffie sort of did and give everyone some sort of unique fun thing that they can do instead of either just walking slowly or telling Red 13 to pull a lever from across you know, <laughs> right. a, an yes. entire map. Exactly. Um, I want to also echo your sentiments on Fort Condor, Brad. Uh, I, I was surprised by how much I liked it. In fact, uh, I'm going to throw this out there. I think they might have... Uh, I'd be very interested if they ever do a behind the scenes talk about how that came about, that Fort Condor, like who developed mm -hmm. it, because I noticed a striking similarity to a certain mini game in Final Fantasy XIV called Verminion, which is pretty oh. much the same thing, just a little structured a little differently. I was like, when I was playing it, I was like, wait a second, these controls and everything, I was like, and, and you do these materia AoEs, and like, oh, I was like, hmm. This looks just like the thing in yeah. 14, but refined and simplified a little bit. So I was like, I wonder if they did that. But what I'm trying to get at is uh, I had a good time with it. But to what you were saying also, Max, about things they could do, and especially if it goes open world in the next part, another thing they could take from 14 I think would be really amazing sightseeing uh like secrets logs uh xenoblade does this too they're they're, they're they're like secret areas that are hard to reach and you get like a bonus like either exp bonus or some kind of title or achievement Didn't 15 have that as well there i was think like a, they did like a, a quest i, I thought they did too to take i'm like blanking on it but mm -hmm. like that would be perfect it's like there's some yeah. secret waterfall or you know in the cave when you're going through the caverns when you like meet the turks like maybe there's some secret like cavern with that with that uh 
the one where they say like there's like that materia found in or something maybe that's hidden or yeah. something or mm-hmm. just cool stuff like that would be like a nice enough reward to get you to go off the beaten path i think do you guys think that fort condor will come back in the next game oh i was thinking about that i th- i hope so man i hope they i yeah. hope they just add and expand it yeah so i was hoping they do <laughs> i hope they like when you get to Fort Condor, they're like super into the mini game actually there, because like they're promoting like that game or something because it's based yeah. off the actual place. I'm like, give me that Fort Condor gift shop <laughs> like where no I can buy more units that weren't in the uh, this version of the game or something. And I hope they get like really weird with some of these units, maybe some stuff from other Final Fantasy games, some different enemies maps. maybe. Yeah, oh, different man. maps too. That'd be sick. What if you get to Fort Condor? It's like an esports tournament thing. Oh, like, oh no, so. thank you. No, thank that you. Doesn't sound out, that doesn't sound too out there, actually. I feel like that could actually happen. And that's like a like that's a long term quest. Is like you got to rank up and qualify for like the tournament there. Yeah. And that you got to keep coming back in like it's seasons or something like that. <laughs> Oh my god! I think there, awesome. there's a, there's there's like a wonderful little thing that they can throw in there too because Fort Condor eventually when you get to it, it it really seems like Shinra and Midgar um, have this influence on the people of Shinra and Midgar and a lot of the outside world is at some points if you're next to a reactor kind of untouched by it. So even though you have these guys that are actually at Fort Condor, which has clearly had a lot of influence from Shinra in the past as they've tried to get the dang the bird out of there, right? The big materia. How cool would it be if you get there and they're all like, wait, you're playing a game called Fort Condor? And the cloud's like, wait a minute, you're telling me this place isn't fictional? And like, they, they can discover the fact that, wait a minute, this was a real place? Like, Shinra just stole this idea and made their own thing with it? Like, that sounds like a very Shinra thing, you know? Yeah. So it, yeah. that actually adds a wonderful little world building where Shinra just, like, goes out to places, sticks a reactor there, and just goes nuts. <laughs> yeah. That would be perfect. That'd be, that's a good idea, Max. Uh, this is like totally out there, but I hope there is a, uh, like a tournament arc almost for this Fort Condor <laughs> mini game or something like a side quest, like Cloud and the gang represent Fort Condor and you fight people from Shinra, then you go through a tournament, like, let's say you fight like Scarlet, she's one of the opponents or something like that, or some of the Turks. <laughs> it's so stupid, but I think it'd be really fun. How, how cool, I mean, this, this is just us like literally fangasming for the sequel, but how cool would it be if you had to specifically fulfill all these requirements and fight all these people and like work your work your way up the chain to the point where if you confront rufus very briefly and you have done all the other fort condor stuff ahead of time up until that point rufus in this one moment where he's like talk to a bull is like you want to play fort condor yes Yo. and he's That's like, like he's like the, the secret that i want the secret condor battle yes like, that'd be sick that would be sick Dang. <laughs> yeah they need to do more of that stuff for sure um I don't, yeah, I don't know if they're going to go that crazy. I would love to see that. No, I don't think but they will, but... It was nice. There will definitely be a big eSports Fort Condor event if they continue Fort Condor at Golden Saucer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that will be a big question is whether or not it shows up there or they opt to go for, like, other mini game stuff that might, you know, be the... Like, take the limelight for part two. Right. It's like, hey, here's something you remember from the first one. We, we just want, like, what well, we did to Fort Condor. We're doing that to this. It's going to be insane. You're going to love this. It's Yeah. You know, I, have, I have high expectations for Gold Saucer, but yes, that is... I have very high expectations. That <laughs> damn roller coaster better be there or I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we could... We could we, I think we'll the touch upon... The snowboarding upon... machine better still be broken. Yes. It's oh, like yeah. You just can't get on it yet because whatever, it hasn't happened. So you actually do it. Absolutely. Um, there's definitely stuff we can theorize about part two. I, I know later we're probably going to get into it. Um, I want to back up back into the Yuffie DLC real quick. And I want to ask you about some of the story stuff. Uh, starting with the, the, the avalanche, the, the real avalanche, mm-hmm. the, the underground. We finally see the other unit yeah, how did or you whatever. Like, yeah, how did branch. you like seeing that? Uh, getting more of that like world building about like the splint, like, you know, Barrett's groups, the splinter group. Did you like the characters in this new avalanche at all? I, uh, I'm just kind of uh, curious. I mean, I liked them. It was just super brief. Like, I feel like these are going to be characters in part two or whatever. Like, But I don't remember a lot of their names. I remember Billy Bob because his name's hilarious. But it was just like a brief introduction to these characters. So, I mean, I liked them, but definitely need more of them. 
Yeah, I think the only thing I remember was one of them looked like Axel from Guilty Gear. I think that might have <laughs> yeah, been Billy Bob. Yeah, that's Billy Bob. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that that's like kind of about it. They they were sort of there just to prime you for what's going to be happening in the DLC, the fact that there's mini games and stuff. But I think the the general characterizations are good, like in the same way that even the moments where you run into Leslie uh, in the main game as a, like a new character, it's fine. I think it works mm -hmm. actually pretty decently. So Square at least has a pretty good idea about how to uh, integrate their smaller characters and at least make them like kind of enjoyable. You're glad they're around. And yeah. you even get that feeling with Roche, especially in this one. They're doing a pretty decent job with like the new lore, right? Like the newer characters that are sort of here. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't forget the new characters, as you said. You know, they had Roche there. Uh, was it uh, Kyrie? I always forget Kyrie, her, how, yeah. her yeah, name. Yeah, she was in yeah. it too, right? Yeah, and she mm -hmm. even like admitted, they're like, oh, I even lost when I was cheating and stuff. Like, your personality was still <laughs> intact. Kind of appreciated that. Um, I really liked, I, I think I liked, I'm still not sure, Sonin. Um, the new addition, Yuffie's kind of comrade who joins her in infiltrating Midgar to steal this ultimate materia from the Shinra headquarters, from mm -hmm. lift it from Scarlet in them. Uh, his storyline, did you did you like his development? Did you like his backstory about how he was kind of like being protective of Yuffie, kind of letting her be in charge even though he really knew what was up? And, you know, his the story with his sister about what happened with that, that's his motivation. Um you know, I'm just curious if you liked him as a character, and you know, did you feel satisfied by his involvement in in, in this DLC? At least for me, I think the, the Sonin uh, is like a really specific role for this story, and it's the fact that Yuffie is an extremely eccentric and a very charactery kind of character, right? By the nature of her like teenage girl personality, she's very extreme and very dramatic, and you know, kind of like. She's, she's, she's on like a 12 out of a 10 scale. So Sonin is not that. Sonin's like a 7 out of a 10 scale. A really like calm sort of guy, level-headed approach that has gone through some stuff and has seen some shit. And I feel that their dynamic is fantastic. I really enjoyed, you know, putting these two polar opposite characters next to each other. So obviously, pretty good idea that Square understands its characters. Where you stick not two characters that are similar, two characters that are completely different. And give them a dynamic. And the dynamic is that the insane, eccentric, crazy girl is her boss. <laughs> and he right. just has to put up with it. And he's just like, why me? Like, there, a lot of those moments are fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And I think they do a really yeah. good job. <laughs> like, oh, geez. Every time you like <laughs> face palms it's or whatever. Good. Yeah, I'm it's like, great. Yep, this, I love, is yeah. how, this is how the it, audience feels. Yeah, it you know? feels very natural. Yeah, their dynamic. <laughs> it, it was, I think they nailed it. You're right. But uh, in terms of his like backstory, I don't know if it... I think it, I think it definitely set up enough where it's like, obviously Shinra is a bunch of angry, evil assholes. And it sort of is more establishing that, that their influence on the world uh, goes way beyond Midgar. So that's good. Did I feel like extremely touched by the fact that um, like he lost his sister and he's sort of comparing Yuffie to his sister. I thought it was, I thought it was handled well, but I don't know if, you know, Sonin's spoiler mode, like his passing um, really like affected me super. It just, it just, to me, it gave sure. more character to Yuffie more than anything. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was thinking too. I'm like, oh, she'll have more beyond more to her character arc beyond her village or something like that with her dad. I actually like that he was trained by her dad. I thought that was really cool. Just yeah. a little nod. Uh, in terms of his sister kind of thing, I thought it was okay, I guess. I it, It's, an, it's a, a motive that makes sense, I guess, but you, we don't get a ton of time with it kind of thing. It's just like a, a brief taste, and I totally understand that for this DLC. And I'm sure they're going to dive way more into that. But uh, yeah, for now, I think it was all right. And He's clearly left with like a cliffhanger. Clearly, oh, yeah. like, see you oh, in the next parts. Yeah, yeah. This is this is going to be used against this character later on. Yeah, I, I I get a bit of flack for this, but I mean, this is going to be some uh, harsh opinions here. Uh, I don't know if many parties really had Yuffie in it in the original Final Fantasy VII. Sure. I think she might have been one of the least popular characters next to Kate yeah. Sith. Um, just yeah. because she was kind of annoying in the original game, but she was specifically designed to be that way. And I think right. what they did with Yuffie in this is actually give her some more character, you know, other than her, like, the Pagoda story that happens mm -hmm. in Wutai. I think they I think they did a pretty damn good job of making me curious about where she's going to be going and what arc she's going to have. Because in the, even in this story, she has an arc. She goes through some shit. And that's all I really wanted out of this DLC, personally. I, I really wanted to see, like, are they going to make me like Yuffie? Like, mm -hmm. is that is that going to happen? And I think they did a pretty damn good job by the time it concludes yeah i agree 
Uh, yeah, that's good. I wanted to know how you liked her characterization in this one compared to the original game, which uh, you oh, brought dude. the point where she, you know, she was kind of like a <laughs> you know one track mind, pretty much. You know, she compare one Yuffie from this to like mm -hmm. Advent Children. Oh yeah, dude. Like compare every, Yuffie oh, everyone in Advent Children that was Cerberus. yeah was. Oh my <laughs> she's God, just like man. a complete shithead in that game yeah. and doesn't do yeah. anything. <laughs> then didn't uh, you play Dirge recently, Brad? I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So you have perspective. <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, I mean, the final, uh, the ending for her, uh, one of the final shots, like her seeing the plate drop and just, you know, yeah. seeing that, being there to witness that devastation and then at, on top of the loss of Sonin and then afterwards, her final shot of her riding off on the chokebo saying, I can't do this alone. And, you know, she's trying to put on like that happy go lucky act again, saying like, I'm going to recruit people and stuff, which is like, OK, you know, it's a tease of what is going to come. But right. I, I like it made her it put more sympathy out there for her that like yeah. you know she can mm -hmm. she's experienced so much loss and that like I think it's going you know I'm curious to see how it affects her because I think a lot of these characters it's just part one I I don't think any of them gone through their final change yet this is just the first phase of like a much more in depth character arc than they ever had like everyone likes to say Cloud in part in the original game had like the biggest character arc to, like change because of what he went through but it's like. I think every character just in part one so far is just like blown that away. And I was right. really happy with what they did with Yuffie because I want to see if that like sadness, that like that devastation gets to her. If it ever, like, cause she came close to punching the hell out of Scarlet in that elevator, but she had Sona in there to like kind of keep her in check. It's like, will she have a moment where she snaps or something? Or, you know, will her. Will she have composure being this young teenage girl who, I mean, but obviously you said, Max, she's seen and been through a lot of shit too. Yeah, and I th I think that there's going to be I'm gonna call it right now. Uh, I think in the in the game she's gonna meet up with you know the party, and she's gonna essentially grow character dynamics through the party. Um, and if there's one other character in the party that sort of represents like the Sonin, like a complete polar opposite of this extreme <laughs> like aggressive hyperactive character, it's probably gonna be Red Thirteen. Yeah. And yeah. Red Thirteen would be a great polar character for Yuffie to sort of like sit her down and talk about things well she's just extreme and crazy and like they have these two characters that are I exactly opposite of each other and man just thinking of the way they're going to make them interact considering the way they made barrett and red 13 act oh with each other God. in the main game yes. it's so yes. good dude yes. yes i would love to see that absolutely i mean it makes the most sense Man, this just made me think of this too, uh, Brad and Max. Something I hope they either bring back or flesh out into something more than what we saw in Intermission is the kind of like the the dynamic between Sonin and, and Yuffie in combat, like activating that like link between them. They were obviously Karmad Shinobi, so like it, it, like RP wise, it made sense. I wonder if they will go that direction with some kind of bond system where if you have certain characters paired or you interact with them enough, you activate that kind of bond link where it enhances, you can go into some kind of enhanced <laughs> attack mode between the two of you, like some risk reward thing. I mean, did you like right. that? And would you like to see that return in some form? I, I think it worked really well for two characters. I wonder about three if it'll be too much or like overly complicated for a lot of people, but I am very into the idea of characters teaming up for attacks with each other. That's my shit, so I hope they do that. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like this is almost a primer for what's going on in the future because they have to expand the combat in some way, right? They have yeah. to do something more interactive than the, than the main game was, especially in the sequel. Um, and I mean, I'll also say the two words that everyone's thinking on top of their heads, which is dual techs. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like it's one of the most fun elements in a, a, a ton of RPGs that especially like turn based is just combining characters to do interesting, cool and different things. Mm -hmm. But based on what you were saying, Mike, I think that's also a, a great idea. The fact that they could um, amplify those elements, possibly through other means. Like how cool would it be if it wasn't just through leveling it up and fighting and it's like a point based system? How cool would it be if it's like depending on how much you talk to these characters? Yeah. Depending on how yeah, much you include yeah. them in mini games, depending on how much you do this stuff. And suddenly if you do all these things, you like maximize this sort of relationship status that allows you to do this big ass attack with them in battle. I think the other thing that deserves a lot of credit is the way it's integrated into the controller. Like it just works like mm -hmm. it's not a, it's not a very complicated system it takes a it takes a little bit of brain power at the start to sort of understand okay so now i do this with sonan i activate sonan's like dual tech like sort of ability and then we can go do stuff together but yeah. the idea that that uh, that l2 button 
even if you're even if you're in combat with the other characters, that L2 button could be used for that in the future, you know? I, yeah. I, I, yeah, the reason I think this might come back, maybe not for everyone, Brad, you might be right. It might not go as f for combat purposes. It might not go as far as like every character can do it. But one of the concerns is we've had ample opportunities in the original game for Red 13 to have technically been playable, but he was AI controlled. And everyone's like, oh, they just didn't have enough time to finish this combat, but it, 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 they're waiting for part two. But we saw how Sonin was handled. You don't control Sonin in real time. You can issue commands to him, but you don't switch over to him, which is different. So yeah. what if Red 13 is controlled that way, like through Yuffie or other characters, is that they aren't directly playable, but you can issue the commands to them, and you have that like yeah. link system. And would there be any other characters like that might fit that either Sid or potentially new characters they might throw in yeah. there. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea for guest character kind of things, but I think all the main cast, they have to make them playable as every other characters. I think that'd be a big missed opportunity. So, so you think Red 13 will be, like, traditionally? Yeah, like, I think oh, okay. he will be. Okay. I think all the original party members will be. Yeah, but, 100%, I agree. Okay. Like, everyone's yeah. going to be playable. I, I even think that they're going to go kind of even crazier with this like in sort of because square square likes to do this right where they they sort of match like the thematic elements of their game into their gameplay into their story like into their characters with like, like the whole story is about this and the next game is clearly setting up for something that's very open mm -hmm. the uh the new director um I, I forget what his name is but he's the guy that recently was like sort of announced from the, being the co-director of the previous game is now like the main director of this one and titsuya nomura is the creative director of part two um He's a huge fan of Horizon. Like he has said oh. in interviews several times, he loves Horizon uh, Zero Hamaguchi? Dawn. Hmm. Noki, Hamaguchi. Hamaguchi, yeah. Okay. Um, so there's already this precedent that, yeah, the next world's going to be, the next game is going to be open. The open, the world might actually right. be open. So in, in that way, you're out to think of the combat too. So how are they going to amplify the combat, especially taking advantage of potential next generation stuff? Mm -hmm. To me, it's like the dream situation is you don't have a party of three anymore. You got a party of all of them. PHS oh, yeah. is in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you can sort of utilize anyone on the fly if you want to. It's just figuring out how to make that thing work. It's kind of yeah, yeah. You, like you could have your main three, I guess, and just you know you tap a your button starters. to bring someone be like in Final for Fist, a like, second to do a certain move or something like that. And they just go back like Marvel style or something. You know, you just call yeah, them in for a yeah. second instead of instead of leaving battle, bringing in other characters. Like that seems kind of archaic, even even by today's standards. Like in in a traditional RPG, like a turn base, that's like the whole point, right? Where you compose your party. Mm -hmm. But in a scope where we're going to be getting more and more characters in Final Fantasy VII, in, it, it would make sense like if you have a starters, but you can also utilize other team members to do stuff for you. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting because, I mean, the original game did stick to only three characters at any point where was, you know, playable. But then again, I mean, other Final Fantasies have gone beyond that. I mean, we saw in real time in an open world game four characters in a party in Final Fantasy XV. You know, Noctis right. and, and in the group, they were all interacting and doing stuff. And then I mean, even the more older school Final Fantasies, you have to like five characters at a time. I have to forget if it goes beyond five. But in single player ones, like who knows? Maybe they just do all of them are playable, as you said, Max. And it's like a toggle system, as you said, Brad, where like maybe some of them are like not on screen at all times. But like you just do like a hot, like a call in like, hey, I'm getting low on HP. Sub in for me, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, maybe it's even something like when they get the airship or something. It's like there's the airships is like above you, and they like just jump down the front of the airship. Or they even, you know what? Yeah. They even hinted at this. Like I know I'm getting a lot ahead of myself with like the extra ending stuff with the main cast, but when. Tifa asked Barrett, are we walking the whole way? I'm like, all right, you're teasing me about all the mounts and, like, transportation shit we're probably going to get because <laughs> sure. you're going to get chocobos, but, like, w I mean, are we going to get the tiny Bronco still? Are going to get airship? Will they have some – well, cars. Will you get into a car and be able to just, like, drive around? Because, I mean, they have the tech from 15. I think those yeah. are – that's kind of the challenge that yeah. they have going forward when approaching a next game that's going to be out in an open world. And even, you know, with the combat, with, with the mobility of the characters around the world, you have to think, like – so what's happening in the background when you have a PHS? Does everyone just go sit in a tent? Like, that's yeah. goofy. We have to do something about that. Like, that's clearly something we can update. So mm -hmm. if the party's all with you at, like, all times, then how do you complement the combat with that, right? How, how do you want to make yeah. every character still feel important? Because clearly, in RPGs where you essentially have, like, your main three characters or whatever, whatever the game wants you to play as, they're the important ones and everyone just gets, like, stuck to yep. the side. So I'd imagine that's something that they want to sort of tackle because every character in Final Fantasy VII 
has some pretty dramatic shit that is relevant to the story, like even Kate's Sith, like really does. So the, I think the bigger goal that they have is how to make every character still feel important, that they're a part, all a part of that journey together, instead of, eh, I'm just gonna stick you in PHS and right. we're gonna see you when I need you eventually. Yeah, I mean, my only counter to this is uh, thinking to the combat as it exists now, adding more than three on-screen characters to directly control might seem a little hectic because oh, yeah. ba balancing mm -hmm. I think they had a nice balance with the three and it felt just right maybe they squeeze in a fourth but I, yeah unless it's some kind of like tag system or you keep we keep bringing up the PHS because it already exists in the game they even used it what if you have to break up into two groups and it's like you guys are going to two different objectives and oh. you can pick which one you want to do first but like and you can freely toggle but it's open you got to make two destinations pick your groups pretty much go what they did with the the finale of seven uh, like, vanilla like, old game yeah exactly so it's like there you go you get to pick and maybe that plays into that bonds thing max if they do something like that it's like who you pick they might even give you a message saying who you pick here could affect you know the outcome or the progress path you're going to take through the game so you know how, you know, considering consider considering <laughs> how what what they've already done with the game and now the DLC and how they've approached a lot of these things and chosen to tackle the stuff that they weren't specifically good at even in intermission, I'm already thinking that Square is they've they've thought of all of this shit already, man. They they've thought of like okay, we need to leave that out for like a, the next game and stuff like that specifically where it's like we don't want to get too crazy and get too far ahead of ourselves even with you know part two because there is obviously going to be parts beyond that. So yeah. I, th I think they've definitely considered this stuff because they've already handled so many of the elements that we were really concerned about, where it's like, oh man, they're gonna screw up this part of Final Fantasy VII and people are gonna be pissed. Um, that didn't really happen with Seven Remake. In fact, they, they nailed those ways and they, they nailed those elements in ways that we were really, were really worried about. So I'm already, I'm already thinking they got a pretty good handle on what fans kind of are gonna look forward mm -hmm. to in the future games and it's just going to be like the sprinkling of all these super dope things like throughout however many titles they're going to be in the future mm -hmm. i want to ask one last thing about the combat if you if you want to talk about other combat stuff i'll, I'll gladly talk about it but a specific thing i wanted to ask both of you about is uh regarding yuffie i i think they solved one of the, my small gripes with the combat in the main game was aerial combat how they handled uh, yeah flying enemies and how you could fight in the air and maybe mm -hmm. just Yuffie lent herself better to this type of combat, but it felt so much better. It felt like I was not just flailing around at times in the air, like, I hope this hits. I don't know if this is going to do it, or I have to rely on Materia. It it worked because, you know, being able to just toss out her weapon and then dash to it and follow it up, and then or using it to hit something and then detonating AoEs, I, I really like that. And I hope... Mm -hmm they take some of that and apply it to some of the other characters in some form but yeah did, were you just do you feel like i did were you ex did you feel it was satisfactory or I mean, do you yeah, think they need to do more it felt better especially because you could tie in some of your your moves with it your like atv gauge stuff like that with, like the tornado or whirlwind or anything like that i think it'd be really cool if you could do some atv moves in the air later on down the line if they want to improve combat that ways I kind of like the idea of some characters being better at air, though, sure. too, also. Kind of like how Barrett was. Like, I think of a lot of characters we're going to get can lend themselves really well to that. Like, Sid, obviously, because he's a dragoon, and Vincent, because he has a fucking gun. So, I think if some unit or some party members are better at that kind of air or ground thing, that could be really interesting for me. Yeah, I, I completely agree, because it's, it's better that there's a strategy involved, right? Where some party members are just going to be better at this than others. But to me, there's, like... And I, I don't think it was there in the in seven vanilla. I'm mean, seven seven remake vanilla. Vanilla. You'd have to like remind me. Um, long range material like fixes this whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like you you oh, you're gonna yeah. sacrifice Good a materia help. slot for the yeah. fact that the character's just gonna go whack and it'll hit things far away. Yeah, they could yeah. probably, probably do for like, like less that. damage or something. You know. I so to me, like the, a lot a lot of these problems are just straight alleviated by making a new materia that enables the characters to have like a attack option. Click to the right, long range attack. You know? Yeah, I wonder. The only thing I worry about that is if, if it's implemented maybe in that way, it becomes an essential materia, like where like, I feel like I have to have this materia no matter what kind of thing. Yeah. And I like the idea of like different material for different situations, but I think that's a, actually a really smart way to deal with it. Maybe you do less damage or something if you do like the range. For sure. You have to balance that like shit that. out. Some trade off. Yeah. 
like like cloud cloud kind of goes crazy like every character sort of just hits the x button and goes crazy yeah. but it would be nice if like you can give other characters commands and just let them do like a long range attack maybe that long range attack could cost an atb but is really strong that's fine yeah you know yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a good way to balance it so you just don't like spam long range and everyone's sitting here six miles away beating up yeah. shinra soldiers that can't even reach you yeah yeah it's definitely something I like, like that yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So something I keep like thinking about how they like they could possibly ramp up the combat, you know, because I obviously I don't think it's going to be one to one when they get into part two. I feel like there will be new enhancements, new changes that they make. Not right. not not maybe drastic changes, but I, I feel like and this is how far will they go? Will they be like as you said, Max? No, there's everyone's getting long range material. We'll just give you one at the beginning, and like you you decide who gets to use it, who's not a yeah, range maybe that's character. Like a limited material, yeah. something yeah, like that. Maybe you only get one. Yeah. Yeah. Story-wise, though, <laughs> you, well, here we you, go. Wanna, you, know, you ready to get? Ooh, yeah, I, I think this way everyone really tuned in. I, I wanted to get like our thoughts on like the actual, you know, gameplay, the the like the combat stuff like that. Because even though this was DLC, man, that ending still brings up so many questions and uh, reignites the debate again. Uh, I mean, I maybe it cooled off a little bit after last year. So much time had passed, but. It is right back in the limelight again about what the heck are they going to do story-wise going forward because we thought we had answers and now we got new questions that challenge what we thought we knew. Yeah. <laughs> and it really, like, the end of that sort of just even cements more that these guys are hyper-aware that people are clamoring for anything and they are being so specific about what they are showing and what they aren't showing in order to keep that a mystery going forward. And I think the the biggest mystery there is, is how is Zack alive? What, where is Zack alive? Where like, is, is, Zach, is there yeah. two timelines type of thing? Yep. I understand for everyone watching, this is spoiler mode, but if you, there is the ending of the DLC, it's not just Yuffie's ending. We go, we jump to the main cast and we see a long ending play out for them as well. We get a little bit more info on where they're going to. I think we all knew where they were going to, but it's like we get all this stuff, and then there's a teaser at the end with going back to Zach. Zach in front of the church in Midgar goes through the doors. He's like really cute scene. He's like practicing what he's gonna it's say to Aerith after mm -hmm. not seeing her for how long, and then he opens the door, and it's just a scene he wasn't expecting. All these people in there crying, mourning. Like, are, what? Why are they in there crying? Why are they mourning? And he just it, it close up on his face, and his like eyes is gonna like almost like looks like he's gonna like break down, and it just fades to black and or cuts to black, and he gives Aerith like question style, like, wait, why did you say Aerith? Like, what's going? Yeah. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, what did you see? <laughs> there's really there there, and it's not even the fact that what he is seeing, it's what he's not seeing. Oh, yeah. right. It's that's the idea is that there is a character missing from this situation. So, I think that's a very clear directional uh, opportunity. And there's a lot of other elements in that scene that are like, we want to present the situation that Zach is alive somewhere, um, but Aerith might not be. You know, that's sort of yep. the initial conclusion Ooh, that you're getting is yeah. is that the people in here are mourning for something and they're hurt and they're like on the ground crying, right? And there's like a lot of something traumatic just happened. Yeah. So either Aerith is missing, right? She's been abducted or something terrible has happened to her. Or she's simply in whatever Zack's timeline is, his modified timeline from the plot ghosts now being gone. Maybe Aerith's dead. And I think there's a couple of things in that scene that really complement, like, like from from a direction standpoint, um, the shot right before Zach comes to his conclusion of like, "Where's Aerith?" is the flowers are dying. So there's like the flower bed. There's like an out of focus shot of the flower mm. bed, and the flowers are all like wilting and fallen over. And uh, there's like some pretty clear visual direction that something really terrible has happened to Aerith. And I think the way like Zach says it. That's, and to me, that's like insanely fascinating. And I don't really have a conclusion whether or not Aerith's alive or Aerith's dead, but it, that seems to be what the, what they want us to think that something terrible has happened to Aerith or she might not be alive because Zack is now alive there. That's, that's, yeah. That's interesting. So uh, that, that's, that, that I definitely thought about maybe that's what it implies, Max, that Aerith is not there. Or maybe Aerith is dead. 
let me say this because I've seen a lot of articles, a lot of outlets jumping to this conclusion. Not the one we just <laughs> talked about, but this one I'm about to say. Uh, a lot, there are several outlets are trying to uh, maybe assert that this confirms perhaps Zach is now in the same timeline as this. The scene we saw specifically that Zach right. we see is in the current same timeline as Cloud and friends who have already gone off and that it's just the refugees after the fall of the plate or whatever. They're just like mourning sure. like their situation. Also, earlier on, we saw like it gets weird, man. This gets so weird because like uh, earlier at the ending of Final Fantasy VII Remake, there's the scene where they cross paths but not in the same timeline and Eris in the middle. Yep. Like Zach is carrying Cloud. So it's like now he's all cleaned up and like, so this must be a decent amount of time after he's bought Cloud back to there. So, so it's like, how could that be the same thing? Because he's with I Cloud already. Yeah, he's with I, Cloud I, already. I, I, how I does that work? Consider, you, you do consider that, that like, oh, man, um, this this to me seems like, oh, God, they're on the same timeline. Like, everyone's upset and pissed and Zach is like, where's Aerith? Because she's out on the big adventure with everybody. But if you if you go back and you think about the events of when does Cloud and Zack survive that crazy battle, and when does Zack make his way to Midgard to eventually get to that church? That shit's happening, like, yeah. months, I think, before mm -hmm. the events of where our characters are right now. Yeah. So this is, like, the past, uh, technically. So this is before the plate fall. I think it right? is, too. Zack would yeah. have shown up and gone to the church to say hi to Aerith pre, um, like, current, like, Sector 7 plate fall. Mm -hmm. So to... To me, that sort of confirms that this might be still two different timelines. Like, they're, they're I, think, I think they're still... And that's, like, the question, right? We don't have answers to any yeah. of this stuff. I think all of us came to this, like, Back to the Future 2 conclusion because there's so much stuff that is being thrown in every single direction that, wow, we're, like, we're going to be splitting this up? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of, like... I don't, I don't think the, 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 the dog chip bag, it was a red herring, and I thought it was <laughs> at first. Sandwiches, yeah. I think it I think it was there for a reason, and it is still complementing the fact that Zack is alive somewhere else, and Aerith might not be. Right. Yeah. I think there is going to be... I think it's two timelines, definitely, because of the bag and because of them walking by each other at that point. I think either right now Aerith could be with Shinra in the, the HQ or whatever getting experimented on. So this sure. could be the quote unquote dark timeline of that. Or she's just, you know, just gone wherever. But I think there's gonna be parts of these timelines converging and you're gonna start seeing things from each of them kind of line up. Like Zach and Cloud are gonna meet at some point in this whole yeah. fucking oh, yeah. thing. Like it's inevitable. Like they're building me that shit. It's gonna <laughs> happen. I just wonder if you're gonna start seeing some like shit cross over. You're like, whoa, what what's going on right here? And to me, that's, like, the biggest thing to build up for. That's the thing, like, all Final Fantasy VII fans will be is, insanely yes. hyped about, is that. Yes. So, to, to me, that's, like, that's not even, like, a Game 2 sort of thing. That's, like, that's like that's end game. game. That's final game. Like, yeah. end of game. That's the final boss. Exactly. I completely agree with you there. So, I don't think you would squander sort of that situation, yeah. you know? I think, I think you definitely would. Th that's the thing we're all hoping is gonna happen. You save that shit for something super incredible. Yeah, man. And it's like I don't know. Like if people haven't played uh, Crisis Core, like they don't know that Zach like has a history with Sephiroth. So it's gonna kind of make sense, like him being there and being a part of this. Yeah. yeah, and and also the reveal of like you have to think of it from the perspective of people that have no idea like what's going on. Who is this guy? Like why does this dude yeah. look like Cloud? All the same questions that we had back in 1997 when we were playing Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. People still have those questions now. People are, are so like, you go play Crisis Score, there's like knowledge and information, but if the game is still a standalone game and does a does an okay job of like setting up things, we're, we're going to learn those elements over time. Like yeah. we're going to learn who Zack's identity actually is. Like what is his relationship to Cloud? Like why do the characters act the way they do? And all that shit's still intact. Like all those big surprising story elements haven't been spoiled in fact they're like teasing at them in mm -hmm. in in the vanilla 7 remake yeah so to me it's like oh man we're still gonna have our big flashback moment we're still gonna have our big <laughs> moment where there's a realization in cloud's head in the future where tifa is helping him you know like that kind of stuff that all well, that can still be really yeah. really great material 
I mean, how deep down the rabbit hole do you expect them to go? Because this DLC does drop a lot of bread breadcrumbs from the later compilation games that revealed more about kind of the backstory of everything. Uh, I mean, he was only an optional super boss, but he had a lot of cutscenes in there. But Vice, obviously, in Deep Ground <laughs> being a part of this stuff, and that gets into the whole... You know, Project S, yeah. Project G, and like so Let's like just talk about Gak. Genova, Let's just do it. Genova cells and reunion theory, and it's like God, I hope it's Gak. It's like still. yeah, <laughs> it's like will are are we gonna get all that in these games, or are they just like? Do you think some of that might be like if it's just make, a tease, a red herring? It's not. We're not I going feel that like far. If they make Zach a bigger deal than we might be thinking of, like maybe playing as Zach at some parts of the game, then I could see more of that stuff kind of leaking in from his past. Yeah, yeah. It feels it feels like they're already setting up for the the stuff that might be happening in Zach's side of the story. Because here's yeah. like the interesting thing: even if we sort of compliment what other people are saying, where it's like, yeah, Zach's in the same timeline, you even have a pretty kind of weird scenario there where everyone else is like one step ahead of Zach, and Zach has no idea like what's there's no like cell phone communication obviously between people at any given time. So Zach is just sort of one step behind, doing the exact same things as everybody else but then moving forward on his own journey to possibly do the exact same thing and go kill Sephiroth. Mm -hmm. and, but his journey is going to be dramatically different than everybody else's because his is going to be most likely filled with a lot of compilation elements. You know, characters that he might remember that worked at Shinra or fought against in Shinra showing up in certain ways and complementing the story that is very different than our main character's retreading of classic Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, like... There's gonna be something with Angeal or something showing up, <laughs> oh, something what like up? that. Yo, dude, I, I, it's dude. gonna happen in some way. Like they're gonna, they're gonna mention these things and talk about them, but I feel like they're gonna be handled in the same way that they handled Nero slash Weiss, right? Yeah. Where they're like, I think they did a pretty good job at handling these characters and mm -hmm. while avoiding the the insane cringe factory that is a lot of some elements of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII. Let me right. ask you this though: Do, uh, do you think? Zach's development in future installments is going to be strictly reserved to cut scenes, or do you think he's going to actually be playable at some point? Uh, I think he could be playable at some small parts. I, I feel uh, yeah, like I it's weird if he's situation yeah. here. Yep, they could do that for sure. Yeah, I feel like it'd be they could weird even if they do didn't. like if they have you know the the intermission of the next part or something like that could be something around Zach. Dude, because that's what I thought they were going to do for the DLC for this game was Zach DLC. I thought uh, we talked about this already. Yeah, yeah. same here. <laughs> Zach's bombing run, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I feel like the thing is the the more they show of Zach. It's like, are they gonna? Are we just gonna know for sure? Come part two, once we see a significant Zach portion, we will know definitively. Okay, he's not in this timeline. He's in a like, it'll, like it'll be clear. Or are hmm. they gonna try and keep that mystery going for I as long as possible? They're gonna keep that Dude. mystery going as then. Long how much can they really show that without shit. spoiling that? I feel like they they gotta be careful with that then. Yeah, I think I think part two that is going to be the bigger answer that everybody wants. So by the time we like switch to Zach or get an idea of what is happening with Zach, is there going to be a clear and concise answer that he is alive on the same plane of existence as our other characters? I don't think they're going to give us direct answers. I, I think it's going to lead up to a big moment, <laughs> a giant reveal where our characters are in the exact same place at the exact same time, possibly doing similar things. And then suddenly what happens? Nobody knows each other is there because they're they are alive in different places. Mm -hmm. And that's where like. Once again, Bugenhagen comes in to sort of explain, like, the live stream has mysterious things and time and right. people can live in different areas at different places and have no idea that they exist because because uh, that is the way the live stream works. Like, I 100% I think that they're just setting up for that shit and they don't want to give us answers just yet. Exactly. I, I mean, I think you're right because also this, this would also clue us into some of the bigger meta questions. Like, who is the person really? Like, why is all this happening this way? Like, is it? Is, was it Sephiroth? Did he time travel because, like, for whatever reason, you know, he was absorbed by the life stream, he infected it, caused Geo, like, it was Genova, his Genova cells caused Geostigma in Advent Children in that timeline, like, but the life stream, it clearly is, like, omnipotent and omnipresent, so it's like, it can be anywhere at any time, so 
is that how this is like there's so many crazy things but like like i guess who's like pulling the strings behind the scenes for all this crap like is is there even anyone doing this or is like i'm waiting for like that smoking gun moment where it's like this was the action in whatever game they're gonna cite was like this caused the ripple effect and that's why there's <laughs> the plot ghosts are going around I'm like waiting yeah, for I, that like, <laughs> I, I i think i i i think the 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 big thing to turn to which is sort of like kind of a giant spoiler is those really small stories that i think nojima wrote about um the post events of final fantasy 7 and the existence what 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 is live stream existence what is like spiritual existence beyond death and what is happening to Aerith and sephiroth and it's that it's those i forget what the na name of them are uh but it's like journey to a smile or something like that like it's it specifically talks about the existence of Sephiroth and the existence of Aerith post Final Fantasy VII and how they are coexisting in like ethereal form and how they're they're there to like sort of like butt heads with each other, um, and it very much reveals that Cloud uh, Sephiroth discovers a way to coexist beyond death and it's being attached to Cloud almost genetically, right? In in the same way that that's the whole point of Advent Children is that Sephiroth exists because he just needs his mimetic legacy to live on. Um, and his mimetic legacy is that in, you know, Mako, and like Mako Infusion, and stuff like that. So the, I think the gimmick going forward is that Sephiroth is 100% the smoking gun of this scenario. I think the, 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 the real, like, oh, I found the gun on the floor. This is it. There's two timelines. Sephiroth is a goddamn time traveler. Is, does Sephiroth ever reference the fact that Cloud has killed him three times? Where it's like, mm -hmm. he killed him back in Final Fantasy VII originally, back in like in the past, this is big spoilers, he kills him at the end of Final Fantasy VII, but he also kills him again in Advent Children. So now Cloud is yeah. like, Cloud is the perpetrator of all of this, and Sephiroth, Sephiroth smoking, the smoking gun for us personally is like, is Sephiroth aware that he's, he is essentially lost to Cloud post-Advent Children? Right. Yeah. <sighs> Kind of seems like it. Kind of feels it, like it. One hundred percent seems like <laughs> yeah. it to me. <laughs> like, seems like, like it. Yeah. Really? Does. I'm just waiting. Yeah, I'm just, just waiting for this all to come back end. to freaking Genova or some crap. It's because like all these characters who are like the key characters either have one or two things in common. Genova cells are like they're derived from Genova or ancient and derived from ancient. So like Aerith, ancients, Sephiroth, Genova, and it's like Cloud and Zack. They have Genova cells in them. So it's like, is this gonna come into play? And it's like, is that how G Sephiroth can like? transcend time like once he went to the live stream like all the stuff he said but like was it really cloud who was like the one who did all this by you know by killing sephiroth and sephiroth just doesn't know he's caught in some like loop or something where he just never knows that like hey you you lost dude you're always stuck it's like dude the it's so the, weird the way sephiroth <laughs> is presented like just just in terms like creatively like not even not even his intentions but the way sephiroth is presented in this game he's designed for there to be like an awareness of him already he's, oh, yeah. he's like Absolutely. in the game and shows yeah. up in ways that are completely weird and different and sort of contrived where it's like this doesn't why is he here this makes no sense and i think that's kind of the point the point is that he's not supposed to be there the point is that the planet and the plot ghosts and everything are doing their fucking best to make sure that he's not there and us as us as players that seems confusing and weird but after you play the game a second time with sort of an awareness that sephiroth seems to know like, yeah, Aerith seems to know. Yeah, they, yeah, they like, know what's going on. And I'll and be once, honest, you, once you approach it that way, you're like, oh, God, it's a sequel, not a remake. Exactly. And I'll be honest, it, it, it reeks of the oldest lore of Final Fantasy, the light versus dark, it, like uh, the cosmos versus chaos storyline, where Will of the Planet is like, Lifestream, Aerith represent cosmos, Sephiroth, Genova represents chaos, and it's like these supernatural you know godly powers are colliding here and like this is how it's impacting you know our regular everyday characters like cloud and tifa and and barrett and them and they're like i'm i guess my curiosity is like they have such an interest in cloud like the end of like seven inner uh um, remake the whole scene at the end where it's just cloud and sephiroth which looked like the final fight from the original game it's like why are we already here why is exactly. Sephiroth mm -hmm. saying these specific why things? Yeah, why are you? Yeah, what end? is what is going on here? And why are you showing this specifically to Cloud? 
Uh, of, a, of like, what is so special about Cloud? Why does Sephiroth yeah. say the most insane <laughs> shit to him? Seven yeah. seconds yeah. to the end. We have Seven no seconds. idea what like, it what, means. What are like, you talking about? What's going on? Because he knows. He's just fucking with him. And that's like, that's uh, the whole point of even the original Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Sephiroth is there just to fuck with Cloud, to get him to do things for him. Yeah. I mean. I love it. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I, I and All I know and it's also stuff. like Hell Sephiroth yeah. is like a, it's he's a moti he's a metaphor for the like the writers I think is like what they're doing to fans because as you said Max they're acutely aware of what fans are expecting what they're discussing and I think they are absolutely playing off the expectations plot being yeah. the purists exactly they're mm -hmm. absolutely playing off all of that. And uh, I think so far they've been doing a very good job of it. But for me, I've always been, I need to see where they go with this to see if it was like it, the payoff was worth it. Because if they sure. botch and, yeah, they botch part two's story and part three and like it just drops the ball. It's like, oh man, that was so. Well, here's where but I'm already pretty confident that I, th I think they got a pretty good idea of where they're going with this because they chose at the end of intermission to. And a lot of us were thinking, man, 7 Remake Part 2 is going to start in the open world. We're leaving Midgar. We're just going to go on our literal adventure. Right. There's calm in the distance. We're going to run over there. They specifically chose to cut that shit out and put it into a cutscene. Because what is the way more impactful element that Part 2 could sort of start with to be really captivating and really exciting? Yeah. You begin flashback. the game in the flashback. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh God! In, in and the that's bus like, or whatever. I think my, 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 uh, my, my dream scenario that the yeah, start Max. screen is is Sephiroth and Cloud and a couple of Shinra soldiers bouncing around in the back of a truck on a rainy, stormy night. Mm -hmm. And that's like it's like press start to begin type of shit. Oh, you know? Max, damn! <laughs> like Metal Gear, Metal Gear, story, like opening scene, like, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God! Like, I, I want that so bad. Yeah. Well, Sephiroth would be so cool too. If you get to use Sephiroth actually too in that fight, and isn't that a, it's perfect for that, man? You can yeah. you can yeah. play as like or you know what Sephiroth fits. You know what Sephiroth fits perfectly as the Sonin character. Yeah. You can't play him. Commands. Nobody controls Sephiroth. Oh, fighting that dragon in the beginning, like yeah. where like Sephiroth oh, yeah. decimates it with like that. Yeah. Even if you're, you're allowed, the, then the game will teach you party mechanics that you're going to be utilizing the mm. same way that Sonin sort of exists. But now it's like Sephiroth is the non-player character at the time that you can sort of like throw commands to. Yeah. You can't play as him, but he assists you. You know. I think that'd be good. It'd be funny if you could give him commands and he just doesn't do them. He's just so, like, no, yeah. I'll just do whatever he doesn't I want. even reply. Just like it's like ellipsis. It yeah. just like doesn't even like doesn't acknowledge you. I mean, I think you're right, Max. I think uh, flashback would be the best place after what they've yep. done. Even if it's not the title screen makes you acutely aware that like, oh, we're you're gonna hit start. We're gonna go into this. I think it'd be just great to like cold open into something like you're not sure, and then like eventually you're like, oh, I'm in the flashback right now. Like we're we're playing the flashback. They, they like I'd rather it start like that. You play through it, and then we catch up to the present where it's like cloud like telling and the just story. Just think of that from yeah. like a marketing perspective. Think of the first trailer, or it's like that Shinra theme that dun 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 dun. You get these images of Sephiroth and Cloud like working together. And they're hanging mm -hmm. out with each other, and they're in Nibelheim, and the fire, oh, yeah. and all this, like, crazy shit. And, like, that is where you promote your next game with this big mystery of, like, what is going on? And then it's the flashback, right? Like, that's, to me, that's, like, well, this is just the coolest fucking thing you guys could possibly know, do, isn't so it? so exciting. <laughs> I mean, there, there already were teases of it. You know they have it ready. Because you know we, we've seen some cutscene images of that that that, that sequence. It's like yeah, it, it's I think it's prime to go. I think you're right. It's my question is how much did they how much did they divulge? Do they only divulge what we already knew in OG 7s flashback? Like it's literally just one to one like information wise. Though they might flesh out some scenes, or will they reveal some new stuff in there potentially? Because this game is these part one, and I expect the future parts are about. Everything's not quite the same. It seems the same, but there are things that are different here and there that's enough to tip you off that we've been going in a slight... Because this is a sequel, as you said. This is not remake as in one-to-one. -one. This is a, a sequel game that's taking place in the events of Final Fantasy VII, but in a slightly different timeline. Damiani, are you referring to the fact that when Cloud and Sephiroth and those characters are sitting inside that reactor at the top of Nibelheim, <laughs> are you telling me that Genesis is going to be sitting in the side eating a friggin' dumb apple? <laughs> I'm talking to him. 
Because that's mean, where Crisis Core goes. Like that, or maybe they should. Because the thing was, Cloud didn't remember a lot of his stuff. Like, he was, he was the rumor as it happened, but there's like blank spots. One of the blank spots yeah. we don't hear about, I think, forever in that game, if at all, unless it's optional, I forget where you learn about it, is because uh, uh, I think it's Hojo who tells you Cloud and uh, Zach. Being captured after that, they're, 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 the Shinra captures them after that scene where the they showdown with Sephiroth, for and they're put in the Shinra time. mansion, and they're held there together. Mm -hmm. Like, will they even tip their hand at that? No. Or have to that? Or yeah, yeah I think no. I think no. Part. That's yeah. part of the Zack reveal, yeah. right? You have to save that. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's something that will be revealed uh, over time through Zack's story potentially. So my question um, to you, Max and Brad, is this: Cloud's character? I mean, they can do whatever they want at this point, but he seems way more composed. He's he doesn't come off the same as the original game and where he is in the personality wise. Like the whole thing about. When he's in the presence of Sephiroth, it messes with him, but, like, he hasn't shown any signs of confusion. He's not, like, a downer. He's actually pretty happy and optimistic. Oh. Are they going to go... the end of intermission? <laughs> Are they going to go for that angle again where the flashback, it's like he doesn't really know who he is? Uh, uh, do you think they're going to lean that hard into it? Or do you think maybe that is going to be the twist where it's like... Oh wait, he he's remembering it perfectly. Why is he remembering it perfectly? He's supposed I to be confused. I don't perfectly. Yeah. Uh, I think he'll remember okay. how he did in the original game, okay. where it's not necessarily accurate. I, I mean, Cloud's definitely going to have mental trauma. Even okay. more, I think, as these games go on, just more and more Sephiroth will be popping up. Like, he had a few instances that were new, like the beginning yeah. after the reactor in the game with the Sephiroth from the fire. But I don't think they'll be like, I don't like, <laughs> I don't think, like, fucking um, Genesis is going to be there chilling. And he's yeah. gonna be like, oh, I don't remember who that guy was. I don't think that was, either. Yeah. I'm just curious. And I, I, yeah. I, 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 I had the same conversation with with my chat room about this a little earlier, where Cloud at the end of intermission, when you're seeing all those cutscenes of them essentially between Midgar and uh, uh, and, and like their first destination on the actual world map when they're going to Calm, Cloud seems like very composed and kind of normal and sort of friendly, like you know, a lot different mm -hmm. than the Cloud that is yeah. throughout most of Final Fantasy VII. So it was, it was my, like, th this seems like sort of like they're trying to emulate this very happy moment with the characters that are going to lead them into an uncertain future. I, I, and I don't think this is going to be the way Cloud acts going forward. And there's a big difference. Um, that's a CG cutscene, right? Big CG cinematic that is probably localized in a very few ways. Cloud acts a really specific way that's a lot different in the localized version of himself in the main game and then you see him in cg cutscenes, and he can kind of act a bit mm. not the same there's like a pretty stark comparison between like square's direction of these characters in um like international versions like they just all act this way because these big expensive cg cutscenes, they have to mouth certain things in certain times but when it comes to like the localized way these characters will be i think that's the way we're going to see them in part two is mostly going to be that because even you guys would agree like i i, I would question if you guys agree that a lot of the cg scenes of the characters like the big expensive cg cinematics characters don't always act the exact same they do in the whole game sure like, yeah. they feel a little different they they're look like a little they look a little moments, different i guess where like so their, I, their character moments are, are more of a the back seat i would say in those exactly You're, it's more exactly. about the spectacle going around so i i, I personally feel that that's not going to be really representative of what's going to be happening going forward like just the cg cinematics i think i think we're going to get our characters acting fairly similar to the way they've acted where they're really snarky and they have great lines and you know a, a lot of unique character dialogue between each other that sort of we want them to butt heads damn it I, no oh, they're going to just be heads. friends that's for yeah. sure like, we, we need that to happen barrett's stuff like barrett's gonna be pissed a lot of this next game yeah so we're gonna get they're, that everyone's super happy right now but there needs to be something that like the party just can't be all like, jolly, let's yeah, get on a chicken and right. avoid this snake, you know? Like, there's going to have to be some <laughs> some pretty crazy stuff that puts our characters at a moment of contention where it's, there's an uncertain future at the end of all of this. And that's, like, mm -hmm. what the first game is setting up for is an uncertain future. Um, and I'm, I'm super down with that. Like, I... I just want to see these characters talk to each other, you know? I want to see these characters, like, engage and talk to each other and have, have, have shit to say to each other that, like, makes them question stuff. And gives them more mm -hmm. character, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I was always thinking that the identity issue with Cloud, it, they, whether they would play it a little bit more reserved in Remake, because it was yeah. like... But if they do, my other thing I was thinking about is that 
Sephiroth's going to reappear sooner and fuck with him sooner, basically. And I yeah. think oh, a yeah. great way to do it wouldn't necessarily be like like causing him to have flashbacks to like what actually happened because this is the you know the this is the all being all knowing Sephiroth who knows things he shouldn't know. It's like what if you start showing him visions from like the other timeline or, or you know like or showing him visions of Zack still alive? Like who's Zack? Like you know he's like wait a like wait a second sure like and that already happens in Seven Remake. Yeah, Cloud Cloud gets visions of the future. Of stuff mm-hmm. that is going to happen, and he has no idea what he's looking at. I think and it's it, like affecting him. I think it would so, be great to do that to play that's off brilliant, play like, off multiple t- like multiple timelines, like showing him both. Like when he thinks, oh, like this time around, like oh, they're setting up so Cloud's gonna figure out that the sooner. And Sephiroth shows up, shows him a vision that's like of a different timeline, and then he's like, wait, what the hell? I thought I knew this, now I don't. And it's like both for the player's perspective, because we were saying they're probably keep that Zach thing a mystery. I wonder if they're gonna keep you guessing with Cloud as well about his backstory, yeah. like. Wait, is something slightly different? You know, like is, is things altered because they have altered things? It's like I'd love it if Sephiroth is just that. He is the unexpected, the unknown, messing with both you narratively and the player expectation-wise. Would be amazing if you also approach this from like um, the perspective of the developers, uh, the perspective of of Nojima, like the scenario writer and the director, and how they'd want to approach these games going forward. You you think they're kind of aware? that Seven Remake's storytelling is as captivating as it is because of the unreliable narrator, right? That's like the thing, that's one of the biggest hooks of the game is that you're led to believe something this whole time and until you get to a certain point you find that all that shit isn't real and that what you are is now a big mystery. So to me, like, why would they get rid of that? Like, does does it not seem like that stuff is still super like present now more than ever? That yeah, they're gonna they're gonna more. possibly amplify that yeah. way more because yeah. Zach is now alive somewhere. So how are they gonna utilize those things to make it even worse? Or I'm sorry, even more impactful for our characters. And to me, like from a developer standpoint, that's just like, oh, this is gonna yeah. be good. Like that's like <laughs> they, they get excited about making the game. Yeah, that makes me think of like if they'll do some even more crazy shit in like the Temple of the Ancients. And maybe like some talking about like time like tying in timeline or something like that even into that kind of stuff like even just diving in more to the ancients like their whole mystery and their powers with the earth i don't know leaves a lot of room open for even more stuff <sighs> i'm man and and they already they already yeah. do a lot of the um in in the base game not the dlc cloud still has his moments of you know character crisis where he's sitting like in a big white background with just his himself and another version of himself talking to himself you know yep like, oh, a lot yeah. of those things still happen. In fact, he has more character crisis moments where he gets, like, crazy visions of Sephiroth now that either might or not, might not be there. And clearly mm-hmm. they're not there because everyone around him is acting uh, like like he's insane. And Cloud just absolutely brushes it off and keeps going forward, you know? Like, well, that's not normal, but we'll just keep going, I guess. Like, eventually this is going to come to a head where the same way it does in the original Seven. Yeah, like... I think the next game is going to be a lot of him getting visions of Aerith's death, like the whole game. And maybe he'll kind of understand that she's going to die at some point and he tries to interfere with them. And that could cause some friction between Aerith and Cloud because she knows, like, essentially I have to die kind of thing. And he could be yeah. pushing against that. So that could open up a whole other thing for conflict or Sephiroth yeah, coming Brad, in to fuck with them. Brad, Brad gets it. Brad gets the... The, the intention of the developers where it's like, how do we make everyone's heart break all over again if they know it's going to happen? Exactly. How do we, how do we break hearts uh, a second time, even though this is like the biggest spoiler? This is like mm. the Luke is my, I'm sorry, Vader is my father type of situation of video games, right? So how do they go into this? You have to give the players a feeling that yeah. you're going to be able to save, save her. her yeah. Yep. But you can't. Like, there'll be some moments where you'll actually be able to change something that you thought you wouldn't be able to. Maybe like a, just a small moment, even that. And mm-hmm. maybe Cloud will get that confidence that he can do it. And so when he fails, it becomes even more devastating to him compared to even the original. Because, like, she's going to die. I don't know if she'll die next game, but she will die at some point. Man. See, there's no way a Final Fantasy VII continues. The, 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 the beating heart of this game's story is that all the characters in Seven already, like deal with like the, the a big part of the character evolution of seven and the character arcs is that every character deals with loss like the loss of their what happened to their country the loss of what happened to their loved ones the loss of what happened to their family like 
every character in seven deals with loss in some way. And then what happens in Final Fantasy seven? You literally lose a main character. Yep. There's no way they're take because they're already doing that. Like what just happened to Yuffie? Yuffie's already mm -hmm. dealing with loss. Like they're dealing with the I fact mean... that she's losing her father and her family and her country. And she just lost like a really good friend that like they're already setting up for all of this shit. Then I don't think Be that they're setting up for it for careful. no reason. Because oh. we still have that whole thing with with, with with Jesse and Wedge, where why are they? Where, why are why is one of them oh. alive and, why and implying? Why is it implying that she's also maybe alive? And like what they were supposed like Max though, I will concede though. The what, how they're doing it is they die somehow. They die a different way. It's like we're still gonna do it to you. You thought you thought you prevented it. So I'm expecting Dude. I'm expecting Eric to die, just not in the same spot and way she died in seven. I'm expecting it to happen. You're gonna think you got past it. You're gonna be like, oh god, please get back to this part. Please let her be alive. We did it. She's alive. We did it. We go and then like an hour later, like oh. Fuck, she's dead. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Later, like, that, yeah. that, stuff like that is what they get to have fun with, right? Yeah. I, mm -hmm. And and who who is he, after after what we have seen and knowing the ending of the original game, right? Not well, not the old game, but like Seven Remake, and now seeing how the way things are being approached, where Zach's like hanging out in Midgar mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Who is to say that Zach being at the church and witnessing like all these people and Aerith being gone isn't the same reality? of Biggs waking up. That, I mean, that's totally yeah, possible. That I mean, like, we don't Biggs have the answers. And yeah. he's like, dang, I'm alive. Like, what the heck happened? Dude, and seemingly he has, like, Jesse's, uh, on his nightstand, he has, like, Jesse's, like, uh, headdress thing, right? Mm -hmm. Who's to say that's the reality where Biggs survived um, whatever the hell happened? And... And, and Zach's alive there, too. Like, that's the stuff that they're setting up because at the end of the previous game, you see like conflicting scenarios, right? We see like Zach's alive and his timeline carrying Cloud. Our characters are out doing their thing. Suddenly, like several, uh, several. Uh, I don't know how much time has passed, but we get a vision of of Biggs waking up. Like, yeah. How is this happening in relevance of what's happening now? Like a lot of shit just took place in between that that plate falling, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just because it's sandwiched there's already, between like, a weird... the, the recovery thing there. Like the exactly, there's already peoples. like a weird conflict yeah. here, and we see that conflict again at the end of intermission, where our main characters are out doing it something, and oh, now Zach's back in in town, like hanging out. Like, where do they exist, and at what point with each other? And that's where the develop developers don't want to. Yeah. We don't want to reveal. We don't want to tell you exactly what's going on. We don't want you to know how they're alive. We don't want you to know how Biggs is alive until there's like a big revelatory moment. For and sure. I, that's what all of us are like yep. as Final Fantasy VII fans. Like, I don't think regular people that just jumped into this game are like, <laughs> yo, I don't, what's happening? I don't know what that is. I think FF7 fans are desperately clamoring for any information of like, how the fuck is Zack alive? Where is Zack alive? Where is Cloud in Zack's timeline? They both have the sword, guys. Like, yeah, <laughs> they're waiting. They do have the sword, yeah. They're waiting. They're just oh, waiting. They, I think they have a huge plan for this shit, and I think the way they, they're setting it up makes me think that they're they're going to set up for some really cool shit with it. Yeah, don't worry. There's, they're going to pull Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid 2. You're gonna play as Zach most of the game, and uh, Cloud's gonna die, and you're just gonna play as Zach, and they're gonna do a bait and switch with everybody, and uh, oh then everyone's gonna complain that Cloud is dead, and I'll be the new controversy for the next 20, 25 years that oh they killed off Cloud, what the hell? No, they're not gonna do that. My question <laughs> though is, I was just trolling right there. I don't think any of that's gonna happen. My question though is, Max, you're saying like fans, the veterans are like clamoring for any new information. We just got this. What you know? How long do you think we're gonna wait to see something about part two? And also, how much are they gonna be able to show without like giving away? Like, I think they get into this dangerous territory now where they have to be very selective about what they show. I mean, I think they can absolutely do it, but like, do yeah. they go as hard anymore on part two with like the the marketing blitz? Because do they um, need to? I think they do because. As we explained, where is the next game initially setting up? What is the next game initially like presenting as far as like a marketing perspective in terms of like initial reveal? Flashback stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flashback stuff it's is perfect for the sake of marketing. In the, fire, and... the village burning. Yeah, it's like that prince perfect. money right there. That's what everyone wants. <laughs> That's just the literal <laughs> like like Nintendo DS prince money type situation yeah. where everyone's just super anxious. So they can they can ride that for a long time leading up, and then they can mm -hmm. finally get into the points of like the open world. But they can be super coy about the open world and. 
show like crazy foggy dank marshes and you fighting like a huge snake that's hunting your ass and stuff like man that stuff's gonna be great and you don't have to show anything about zach right you can show completely yep. separate stuff about what's going on with zach and all of those elements i mean if, if we're talking about actual like release windows and how long this stuff is going to take um seven seven remake original uh is notorious for it's like arguably a very long development but we learned later on that that's because the the team that was initially making it two years in the running had to get scrapped like they had to it wasn't high quality enough and squared was just like you know what forget it this is too big and too important we're just doing this internal so really like from a development standpoint and square taking it over they made seven remake in about two and a half years so that's pretty decent yep. right uh a lot of turmoil happened in between all of that stuff like from its first reveal but you'd have to assume they've been working with this engine and this game and have made all these assets already and all these animations and a lot of stuff that absolutely can be reused and tuned for next generation you know or whatnot and we've seen that we just played it like intermission feels like a truly like next gen ass next gen game and it it plays better like it feels a more polished version of seven remake so in my eyes like the most confident scenario and this is me like hoping with nomura here that what he's saying is actually true where he's like yeah development's mm -hmm. going great we started development back in like october of 2019 for part two and that's when they first said that they're working on it so it's been some time um i think the best case scenario the earliest you're gonna see this game is e3 next year very earliest is that yeah. the reveal of it is e3 of 2023 that's like a first teaser but then it won't come out until uh I'm sorry, 2022, and then it won't come out until 2023. That's like the super earliest. That's what I was thinking it'd be, probably. And I think that's yeah. pretty, pretty reasonable amount of time. But that really depends on how well development goes. They've been saying it's going great. A lot of the times Dev says yeah. stuff is going great, but they, they clearly had moments during 7 Remakes development where they're like, shit is not going well. And we are, we are doing things differently and moving the project in different directions kind of stuff. Like, so there yeah. was some bleak... There's some bleak well, years in 2016, 2017. I think Namor recently said he wanted to tease something for it. It was for, like, some event. He wanted to, like, tease something for part two. I don't remember what it was for exactly. Pretty recently. But he said he had to go through so many hoops and call so many people he didn't even know about. He just was like, I'm just not going to do this right now. <laughs> so, I mean, if he's, if he's even talking in, like, that kind of way, they must be pretty confident in how it's going right now. Yeah. So, and I, hopefully the, we'll the, the other the other challenge is that Square's got a couple of big high profile games that we even know about, and it's for Spoken and I mean internal Square, not like Square in general, like the Final Fantasy teams. They got Forspoken and Final Fantasy sixteen. So mm -hmm. those games need their room to breathe as well. Yep. Right. They need their they need their room to be games and not conflict with like other games. So unless those mystically come out, you know, between this year and the beginning of twenty um twenty two. It's, if FF16 is somehow development is going amazing and that game is just going to be ready to go relatively soon, there has to be some wiggle room before you announcing a whole other Final Fantasy of, uh, of games that technically will be competing with each other. So right. to me, it's like, I think the game you should be really paying attention to as far as like, where is 7 Remake Part 2? Is when's Final Fantasy 16 coming out? Like... Once that's out, and that's been out for some time, I think that there might be a good chance that a 7 Remake Part 2 reveal is going to be maybe sometime after that, or maybe a little bit after that. To me, that makes logical sense. I don't doubt that could be the case. For some reason, I think that 7 Remake Part 2's information about it, reveal, whatever you want to call it, isn't in so... To attach to the hip to 16's fate about its release window, I feel like the games are... 16's obviously important. Obviously, so is Forspoken. I think 7's already known quantity. It's already out there. I think talking about and getting people excited for part two is not going to take away anything from 16 gotcha. or Forspoken. I, I do agree with you that the release and window... I, actually, it's the release window that needs to be is a bit out. better than this because, like, I am very disconnected Final Fantasy fan, right? Like, I'll play... I played 15, but I, I really am not, yeah. like, hugely attached to everything about happening with 14 and, like, all the other properties and stuff. Um, I have killed Chaos, though. That's very important. Yeah. 
That but, fight fucking was uh, annoying. But you played but, it on hard, I heard. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> I did it on and normal. I, I think that was a game that was also like, oh, is this game going to be like one of those games that's going to do... I mean, I think after playing Final Fantasy Origin, I don't think anyone's worried about that taking up the limelight of other games. It's like, <laughs> right, well, yeah. it's just, <laughs> The first thing I said at the end of that game was like, this needs to be delayed till 2024. <laughs> that was like the first thing I said. I'm like, there's a lot of really good ideas, but man, give it some time. So I I, yeah. I do appreciate your insight, Mike, on that because you, you're really attuned with like the RPG scape of Square and what has actually happened with Kingdom Hearts and like their, their huge scope, right? Of where they're going to be going with this stuff. And if you don't think that 16 or Forspoken is going to take like Limelight or 7 is going to take Limelight from them and they're pretty separate properties, then yeah. I think that's pretty valuable. In terms of like marketing stuff and, and trailers and unveilings, I don't think that's going to nest, like they're not going to be stepping on each other's toes. It's just, it's straight up just as simple as release windows. Give each of them about two, three months spaced out. But I think, I honestly think Forspoken and 16 will be out a decent amount of time before seven remake part twos, whatever it's release it is. It can be as much as a year difference between those two, I would guess. It's, it's so what mm -hmm. so what you're saying is that the next time we gather in person at E3 yeah. at Square Enix's booth, we might be behind the scenes chatting it up with the director, if not producer, and them showing us a little visual treat of what Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two is? Yeah, you and Brad might be doing that at, at A3 happen, next yeah. year. Could oh my god. <laughs> they might give that you was the, our last they, they, they might give you that. <laughs> yeah. That was the last that live E3 we did that. The that open world demo. <laughs> yeah, they're going to show you behind closed doors. Like, here's, the reunion. Like, yeah, here's the op open oh. world, man, and we're going to let you dive in for an hour, just hour hands-on with this while everyone oh else god. is playing the flashback yeah, right. demo. You guys <laughs> get the get open world demo. again, describing this stuff to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah you fight the you fight the giant snake it's like here you go have fun and it's like a it's like a mounted chocobo fight where you're running around <laughs> <Some> <laughs> like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man that would be uh i don't yeah sorry i'm i'm now you talked about elden ring we can go forever but you know to, to mm -hmm. bring it back to the point uh yeah i i think you're you hit the nail on the head that like release window it's like it's 2023 or beyond just because if we're if we think open world is legitimate it's even with reusing assets and having this first game in their belt it's that's a, a whole different beast now mm -hmm. that's going to take a little bit more time i mean look at a the we don't know how COVID has impacted everyone, but even like uh, the Breath of the Wild sequel, it's like supposed to be like it's same Hyrule and now it's in the sky. It's like, why is that taking so long? And that's been like, almost, it could be like four, it said 2022 at the earliest. That's five years after it came out. It's like, wow, like open world takes some time to make. Like Horizon sequel, if it even does, if it makes its mm -hmm. release date this year, you know, that's what, four years after with, you know, high, you know, all that, you know, Sony money and that Sony skill and knowledge and those talented teams, it takes a lot of work to make these games happen when they're open world. So I, yeah, I, and I, I you, think you'd it's have reasonable. To, you'd have to assume that even like Nomura and lead developers and the producers of 7 Remake Part 2 are already aware that, yeah, we, we messed this up because it took so long for this thing to come out. And I think that's why he's been, they've been even directly addressing the issues in interviews where they're talking about part two, saying that things are going great. Like, we're mm -hmm. it's working pretty well. We, we already have stuff figured out. Like, like there was, does anyone remember back in like 2016, like a year after we saw the game's initial reveal, they told us that they had just finished the scenario. Yep. Yes, and it was I like, do remember that. What? <laughs> you were like, Wait, you just it was like, figured out what's going to be happening in your game? It was like, what? The Lord of the Rings, the ends talking to each other. We've just finished agreeing that yeah. you're like yeah. not goblins or whatever. But like, we've seen like, the what? game, bro. Like, what are we, what are we even talking about? Like, and yeah. that, that was like giant moments of like, there, there, there wasn't, that's not like a bad piece of information or news, but to anyone that like understands the industry, that's like a, wait, you've done what? Like, you're you're mm -hmm. just starting that? Like, okay, so when's the game actually coming, coming, like, gonna be actually coming out? And they haven't been, either they're being super coy about it, or you take their word for it, and shit is going well. And they have figured out a lot of lessons. And considering, we, we and we have something that we have just played that gives us an example of, like, how much they have learned from the previous game and how quickly they pumped it out, that DLC was, like, six to eight hours, man. Yeah. It was a pretty big chunk of game 
Uh, you mm -hmm. could rush through it on your first playthrough and make it like four or five, but if you do all the cutscenes and I'm sorry, do all the, like the mini quests and stuff like that, it's a good six to eight hours of content. I was kind of blown away that we're still going and a lot of boss fights and all this cool shit. I'm like, they got, they're getting yeah. pretty good at this. Yeah. Like, and, yeah. and making it feel like it's on the same quality, if not even more polished than the main game itself. I don't know. I'm going to take their word for it. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a hopeful situ like kind of guy that I, I think I'm already, I, I think they deserve a lot of confidence with what they were able to present in the main game and the DLC that the stuff that they're going to be pumping out is probably not that, not like a 2030 kind of situation. I hope this doesn't come back to bite me in the future. But yes, <laughs> like I think, I think we're within like a couple of years of playing the next game and possibly yep. a year of even seeing it. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's hard for me not to agree with, with their track record recently, at least like the Japanese side of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like pretty that. confident about it. Man. I, I, I want to keep talking about Final Fantasy. I know we didn't even say anything <laughs> about this. And it's not even story related. I was just blown away by uh, you mentioned something about it, Max. The jet, like the Cowboy Bebop sounding music, like the uh, during mm -hmm. the uh, it's great. Yuffie running around stuff like I just they keep impressing me at the soundtrack. So like I can't I like I want part two not just like all this other stuff that's going blow me away. I just want to see all the new themes they're gonna freaking get to play around with and stuff. Like I hope we, you know we meet like like I hope we go far enough that we like meet Sid. I want to hear their crazy take on Sid's theme. I want to hear that gold saucer music. Yeah, I, I yeah. mean there's so many well, themes that are coming up. I'm like dude, let's go. I want to hear presents all this crazy a stuff. that presents a great question that like. Anytime you beat one of these games or DLCs, everyone has where it's like, where does part two end? Oh, where it ends? Jeez, oh, that's. I, I think it's gonna end with Aerith's like death, quote unquote death. They're I think that's a really a huge, good spot. Yeah. What do you What do you think, like, Mike? Blow. Mm hmm. Yeah. If it's if it's only gonna be three parts, I think they have to go that far. Yeah. I, I think they get and there. I, yeah. I, I think, like, if this game truly, like, is going to be a trilogy, which it feels like it should be, mm -hmm. right? It, this, everything about this is screaming, like, first game is, like, sort of corridor-based, like, cramped city kind of thing. Next game is open, complete polar opposite of that, like, uh, world-gazing, visiting, traveling, like, kind of thing. And then the final game is the revisiting of a changed world, like... We're going to go back to the places that we remember, but now there's, like, destruction and devastation, World and places darkness. might be acting <laughs> a lot different because Doomsday is coming, you know? Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like, part two is the Empire Strikes Back. Like, there has to be something really critical and crazy that brings our characters to their absolute lowest low. Um, and the, the game has to end on, like, those lowest lows, but with a little bit of hope that, like, we're going to make it out of this shit. We're going we're gonna to do it. Um, and to me, like the best, the sickest moment that they could do that is, is a lot farther than I think that they're going to make. Uh, it's what I would personally hope, but in terms of development, I don't think they're going to make it this far. And it's after the crater. I think we got to get our characters oh. up to the crater. Cloud is gone. He's working with Sephiroth now, right? He gave him the damn black materia. And all these things are sort of colliding to the fact that her characters are lost and hopeless and separated and Tifa and Barrett are about to be executed live on TV. And then they look outside the window and everybody's going to die because Meteor's coming. To me, that's like the Empire Strikes Back ending of mm -hmm. uh, then you have to tease something that like Cloud's still out there. Aerith is somehow present. Zach shows right? there's up. There's something, there's some hope that we're going to make it out of this. Like you have to put our characters at the bleakest moment of yeah. this whole game and that is when that is right when they leave the the northern crater and Tifa and Barrett are going to get executed and they yeah. they learn that oh god Sephiroth managed to summon meteor like yeah, it's really that far. Makes you, <laughs> yeah. That like part three, you're like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Next game, please. <laughs> Final boss is Cloud. It's like fight Cloud and he beats your ass or something. <laughs> yeah, some some like Dark Link sort of thing. Yeah. I that, to me like that's yeah, like I, I that that even that even can lead to like a a potential Sephiroth like final battle sort of thing where it's like they just amp up the Sephiroth battles in every single one of these games to like mm -hmm. the huge conclusion or some shit, you know? And then what what ends up being part 3? Part 3 is like another a globe trotting adventure, right? Where you get access to what? The airship. Airship. 
Mm -hmm. You get an airship, and that's how you start the third game. It's like, mm, holy shit! And then we gotta go. We gotta go hunt kaiju's. Let's go. Where's mm -hmm. Cloud? We're gonna find that dickhead. Like, <laughs> <laughs> to me, the, the three parts have made sense since the since this game was revealed back in 2015. And I, I'm I'm genuinely curious where they're going to end part two because that'll have a big impact on how this will be considered mm -hmm. as a trilogy. Yeah, I just with how. M it just depends on how much they're gonna throw at us from like the new content, what they're doing with the, the this new timeline, right. like how. Because as you said, Max, I could see it actually ending part two ending when you said they did. Because not only everything in part three, what you thought would be in part three, but they have all this new shit they gotta cram into part three now as well. So it's gonna make it take like th there's like we need to go this far. If we don't get this far, we're gonna have to make a part four because we got so much shit left. You know, to to cram this final part, you don't even know about yet. So, I could I could see it going that far, honestly. And mm -hmm. uh, then they got new stuff just on top of the stuff. But yeah, that make yeah. No matter what, though, we're not getting we're not fighting the weapons till part three, though. <laughs> I just realized, like, dang it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah big weapon that's fights. That's gonna be that's gonna be a huge part of part three. Yeah, big weapon fights and. Also making Knights of the Round part of the main game and not a side a side quest. If they don't make yes, whatever, dude. if it's PS5 or it's PS6, I don't know where we'll be at that point. PS5 Pro. Yeah, right. If it doesn't make the PS5 Pro stutter, there needs to be, uh, what is it, uh, fidelity mode, performance mode, Knights of the Round 60 frames <laughs> mode. <laughs> <laughs> Where that cutscene yeah. will run in 60 frames. <laughs> I, like I want that. it to make you chug, though, in like any other mode. Like It needs to like, make the system pretty much die. And they get to make the imagine making all of those things like the, the quest for this like ancient earth a Gaia materia like has been like gathering in the earth and unexplored and then you have to go find that shit like and it's not a side quest anymore now it's going to be like a part of the main game like you're gonna mm -hmm. you don't think you don't think Knights of the Round isn't going to be a part of like the main story yeah. they're gonna they're gonna build yeah. that shit this is oh, what yeah. the ancients use to fight like. And, and like evil spirits and shit Hell like this yeah. stuff comes from like old yep. like, I can't wait man yep you know whole backstory yeah. it's not gonna be a simulator battle Ab no no maybe like a hard no, no. version of it but the real ver like the default version you that story main story quest let's go it's like it's like like the Marlboro like the, the Marlboro is in this game but it's a simulator fight but it's mm -hmm. like clearly we're gonna run into a Marlboro or two when we go fight the in snake the world, you know yeah. yeah for sure I'm really excited for the parade in the next part. I can't wait for that shit. <laughs> See what the hell they're going to do with that. Yeah. Parade. Your the, shitty TV like, ratings. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, because, I mean, the Honey Bee Inn was a whole dance sequence with, like, rhythm game. Like, how, yeah, what are they going to do yeah. for that parade? <laughs> yeah, is Roche going to be, like, the guy instructing you what to do on TV or something like that? Oh, man. Oh, we can't had wait. a... Uh, <laughs> We had, we had a great conversation of hopes for the next game of like they made the hell house and the uh the, the chariot boss um or the chariot enemy like the big enemies that turn into like giant boss fights now right and they even did one for uh one of the weird shinra monsters like the big snake thing got turned into a boss as well mm -hmm. our our question's like so what's the next enemy that's going to be turned into like a giant <laughs> boss in part two and everyone was like tank ceratops <laughs> that, tri that Triceratops yeah. tank thing in Gongaga is 100% going to be this yeah. huge boss fight. Yes. That's a really good pick, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sufficiently excited. I was always excited, but, like, man. Oh, was, yeah. Now, this has always been my problem is, like, when they said it was multi-part, it's just the weight, man. It's like, I'm glad they did this. Yeah. I'm glad they did intermission and and uh an intergrade heck it even makes me say like if it's not gonna be 2023 you know what come out next year is zach dlc or something like I'll, I'll i'll take something next year that's just dlc again like make another dlc if that's yeah I'll, like these smaller kind of like intermittent updates i think are actually good ideas to do if they want to space it out like this but hey we're about to get you know a ton of Final Fantasy VII games remade in the way that everyone wanted them to be oh, remade. Yeah. Pretty oh, soon. Mobile, baby. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> All those games are li literally being remade in the way that a lot of people wanted them to actually be. Like, one-for-one one new visual remakes. It's like... Curious how that's gonna be, but... Yeah, I, I agree, like, the waiting sucks. Um, but at the same time, it's like... I think it's better that we're here and not even thinking about it. 
You know, imagine a situation where Seven Remake was just like a visual remake, kind of, and we knew exactly what was going to happen going forward. We wouldn't even mm -hmm. really be having this conversation. True. You know, instead, yeah. they're they are giving you something to really wait for, right? We're, we, we don't, we don't want to tell you shit. We want to we want to tease you and we want to hint and allure at what we're doing with our story, but also have you excited about the fact that there's going to be a lot of new stuff the same way that part one had a lot, a lot of new stuff. So to me, that's like an even better case scenario of just like, well, we beat it. Now we're just going to wait for part two. All right. I'm not going to look at my watch. We'll just wait for it to happen. Like now we're like super excited where it's like, holy shit, dude. People are still talking about this like ending and what the hell it means, you know? Hell yeah. You're right. Um, I did want to ask though, Max, can I get exclusive confirmation that you're going to become a, a, a first soldier streamer? You go, go hard and competitive on first soldier. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Max didn't go climb the ranks to become the uh, top first soldier. I, I definitely was willing to give that game a chance in that first trailer. I was like, you know what? If they want to do some crazy shit, I'll try it. And then oh. I watched the the first reveal stream of it, uh -oh. and people actually playing it, and I was like, I think I'm good. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm good, man. You good. Good luck, guys, to your Final Fantasy VII Battle Royale. I hope it goes swimmingly well. Yep. Uh, but after seeing the gameplay for that, I was like... <laughs> I'm step out of here. Just going on over. Um, yeah, that, that was a little bit of a disappointment. But yeah, we still got, like, I mean, I highly doubt any new from info will be in any of these things. I mean, I mean, technically, they've done shit like that before. Even with, like, uh, Kingdom Hearts, a mobile game. Like that, like the ending to that, they just shut down. Apparently, it's like a big deal. It's like that's my biggest fear because yeah. we used to do the seven. We dealt with this with the the phone game before it became whatever it became uh, before Crisis, the like the Turks and stuff. Like it's mm -hmm. like everyone wondered, oh, it's JP only mobile game? Is that like crucial story? That's like, being remade now. Yeah. So it's I uh, at least I always hope they do that if they don't. But now they can turn Dirge of Cerberus into a good game. Yeah, they could just do what they did with, yeah. Kingdom, with the uh, the DS Kingdom Hearts games. Like, it's turned into a movie. It just turn into a movie. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to play it. Just watch it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Just do that. I don't have to play a lot of those I'm, shitty games. I'm, I'm, I, I'm I played it like a year and a half ago or something, and I saw Brad playing it recently, and anything it's bad, different. It's bad, man. It's bad. It's, it's really rough. Uh, Mike, it's when's the last time you've actually experienced the dirge? I tried to play it years ago. I've tried to play it at least three times now. Every time I've quit, like about two hours or three hours is the most I've ever made it. And I'm like, okay. done. Ooh. Done. <laughs> I was like, you definitely Whoa. weren't experienced. Like, arguably the worst stuff happens at the end. I was like, I was going to uh, say, the longer that game went on, the more annoyed and angry I got. So yeah. Couldn't and take like, it. I, I'm not even, I'm not even telling you, and I'm not even saying anything like bad about people that might like dirge or got introduced to it. Like, cause you're allowed to like it. But I think mm -hmm. as like a, a hard, like if you really enjoy the original Final Fantasy VII, I think Dirge sets up a lot of reasons for you to not like Final Fantasy VII anymore. Like, and I, mm. I remember that feeling that way when it first came out, and I forgot it. And then when I played it again, like a year and a half ago, I got reminded of all these scenes and sequences and cutscenes and character stuff, and I was just like, I think I erased this game from my memory. Like, I, I think I like Final Fantasy VII actually less after yeah. playing this fucking game. It like, hurts it. It, it does, it, it, it is one of those games that genuinely a, a part of the compilation, like, like, when, when you think of, like, oh, God, they don't do compilation stuff, like, you really think of Dirge, you know? And yeah. you, you think of, like, a little bit of first half of Crisis Core, a little bit of that, but, like, second half of Crisis Core is genuinely good once Nibelheim gets kicked in there. So. Yeah. See, man, because yeah. there's definitely another character on the horizon we're going to learn a lot more about, and it's going to be Vincent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man, I can't wait. I mean, it, it, yeah, we got, I mean, there, there has to be like if they're doing this with Yuffie, like they're, yeah, Vincent's even being more insane because he's more integral to actually, you know, the mythology, history, yeah, the history. Well, I mean, is there anything else we really haven't covered that uh, you wanted to speak your mind about? Um, Perhaps you want to talk about Aliens Fireteam Elite, Max? I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. Don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> uh, 
Let's just make a Final Fantasy VII fighting game. Let's just do it. Let's make it like made by Arc did, System Works. I've been wanting that with all of Final Fantasy characters. Yeah, let, let's it's, just let, let's just go get Arc System Works to uh, to, to to put together a 2D slash 3D, you know, um, Final Fantasy fighting game full of you know all the fighting game characters. Let's get uh, Tifa into the last character for Smash because. There's no other Final Fantasy franchises for them to pull characters from, just seven. So we have to get Tifa into Smash. Very important yeah. for that final that final spot, you know? Well, three Final Fantasy seven characters is like a perfect nice little not round, but very round number. Yeah. Three for more, three parts. More music. Yes. There, that's it. And they even put in the description a little bit about a part three joke in there. Yeah. Uh, that's a, I know we don't know. This is not the, the, the spoiler mode of fighting game stuff. Do you guys I mean, love it how like... Yeah. It's it's in the lore now that Sephiroth follows Cloud around wherever he goes in every single game he's in, and he literally did it in Smash Brothers as well. Yes, I do love that. As a King Wars <laughs> fan, fucking, I, I like it. This is relevant. It. Sucker, I respect the lore. I, I respect yeah. Sakurai oh so much more now. For, it had to be that way. Otherwise, you know, Sakurai would have broken the, the link there. We'd all be blaming Sakurai for messing up that. It's relevant to Ur guys as well. Oh, it oh, is? God, yeah. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, they put that as a mini game in one of the parts, part two. <laughs> no way. No. Please don't. <laughs> a fighting <laughs> game mini well. game. <laughs> oh, yeah, all the mini games. I wanted to put anything new in there. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII Remake, part two. Hopefully, maybe. As you Someday. Said, maybe next E3 at the earliest. If not, you know, it's it's cooking. Um, I bet we hear about it before we see it next. I bet, like, we get, uh, like, a... A oh, decent yeah, update where they'll like they'll, they'll even tease probably like, hey, new info is coming soon, which is like, there we go. Start tuning in and, you know, what's the next big event? They're probably going to be showing off that that first teaser trailer. But, yeah, intermission and uh, intergrade. Just, you know, it was just nice even playing uh, 7 Remake in, you know, 60 frames, you know, better yep. visuals, the slightly faster yep. load times. Great. Just a taste of what we're going to get, yeah. Now we gotta wait for that PC version that has been oh, yeah, this, talked about, kind of uh, sort of uh, Epic yeah. Games. revealed. Yeah, December on Epic, Epic Games. Games one. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Kingdom Hearts is only an Epic Game Store, also. So. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder how much better it could look on PC than the PS5 version. I'm curious. You would think if, that if, if it, if it is, yeah. there would be some enhancements, you know, to be had mm -hmm. for that version of the game because they did do some stuff to Kingdom Hearts as well, right? I didn't touch Kingdom Hearts. Sure, actually. I didn't touch it, so I have no idea. In fact, yeah. that was one of the criticisms about it being on Epic Game Store is that like people kind of forgot about it after the announcement that it's such a big deal of a game. Like, why? Why wouldn't they? I mean, it was a deal. You know, they signed a deal, but because it, money, it not being on Steam and other pl other PC platforms and storefronts kind of hindered it a bit. Which is an interesting thing because like people are also saying like this being a PlayStation exclusive as of now, now it's on PS5. It's like, what if this was a big multi-platform release back last April? What is like, obviously it would have sold more copies. Would it have been an even bigger event? It, 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 do you think that what their strategy so far, regardless of what the deal is, do you think it's like still been very successful? Like very, like, do you think it's reached its potential in terms of like popularity? Or do you think there actually is something to it being held back a little bit by not being a big multi-platform release? Like I think it 100% one? could be way bigger if it wasn't, you know, locked to mm -hmm. Sony hardware and it would be definitely more successful. And I think they're going to reap a bit of that success when it eventually does start landing on Xbox and PC and things of that nature. Um, but at the same time, like Square had a financial report from 2020, pretty much almost explaining that Avengers almost tanked the fucking company and they were saved by Final Fantasy VII. Like if if seven didn't come out in the same year as uh what with what happened with the release of avengers that it might be in a much different scenario with square enix going forward mm -hmm. so it, it, to me that's like dang good thing seven happened because it got enough sales and enough warranted enough people to buy it to uh make up for the fact that there was a huge the huge detriment to uh a, a big release that a lot of people are looking forward to that might not have hit on the same levels that everyone was thinking it was going to hit you know so, gotcha. I don't know. I, I think I think it could be more successful, yeah. obviously, and they're going to make more money. But they already revealed, like, like it was literally, I think, said in their financial report, like, thanks to the success of establishing franchise, established franchises like Final Fantasy VII Remake, like, our year is not screwed, like, financially, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, they did have a, they, I think in the end, they did have a record year, too, which also was bolstered by, you know, Seven, seven remake. remake. So, 
that 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 definitely i don't think there's an issue of like the game's not making enough money like dude seven has been f square enix's golden goose for, <laughs> for like 20 like years two decades. yeah because yeah. yeah i mean you've even talked about the meme of the panic button joke of uh, like swearing's about yeah. to go under hit that's when seven remakes seven actually remake. happening Just it's like change everything yep. and like it. and i i had to explain this to people too i'm like do you really think that at the end of this trilogy slash not trilogy whatever the heck these remakes are going to be do you really think that they're going to be straight done with final fantasy 7 and just let it see you later nope. it just goes into the ether do you think they're going to let oh, go no. of like cloud and tifa and all these characters we and have them just have no games no. after this i'm like no max of course absolutely not, not of course not this story isn't going to just end here it's no. going to be the big absolute finale but these characters aren't going anywhere <laughs> like Cloud is Mr. RPG, like, mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, like that. We got to get Evan it'll Children be fine. remake. They got to, they got to yes, redo that. They got to redo please. that story now. Please remake uh, it. Uh, actually, I, that just I have came a crazy out in 4K. Theory. <laughs> you guys want to hear my crazy theory? Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Here's Let's my go. crazy theory. My crazy theory is that because of this timeline stuff and the fact that, you know, Sephiroth has been killed by Cloud multiple times, my crazy theory is that at some point in 7 Remake, with all this timeline stuff, you will get to actually play the scene from Advent Children where Cloud and Sephiroth are fighting each other. Oh, really? Whoa. There will be a moment where Sephiroth, like, you, you revisit the times that Cloud has killed Sephiroth, and you sort of relive these fucking moments of, like, pain, where, you know, Cloud is, like, either in pain or Sephiroth is winning or something like that. It's, like, used against him. I think they'll fucking do it. Yeah, that sounds very. That sounds like it could happen. Wow, it does, I right? Thought about that. Yeah, like it. It really feels like like the, the stuff that they're setting up. Like it's it's leading to a point where the history of Cloud and Sephiroth are really important, right? Where like the reason why things happened, uh, what led him to his motivation, could be used as like a, a gameplay sequence. Yeah. Fuck. As long as Fuck. there's as long as there's blood, it's a it's a complete version where I see blood from Cloud. Sephiroth's yeah, Masamune stand. is piercing through him. And I get that despair line. I'm absolutely... Yeah. 100%. You think he's not going to talk about his pair again? Yeah. Come on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. does it, now, does this mean we get the Kingdom Hearts fight as well? We're going back to the Kingdom Hearts fight. <laughs> no. So, yes. No important question. <laughs> Brad, are we getting it? Because that's no. more relevant too now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, I think it'll be amazing because like it's gonna look like Advent Children, but we're, we're playing it in real time, and it's gonna be like, holy uh -huh. shit, we are playing Advent Children. And we kind of, we kind of got something pretty damn close yeah. to it with the final battle in in part one. Yeah, you know, yeah, pretty close to an Advent Children fight. I mean, yeah, I think these are good ideas, Max, because they have to find a way to top that fight at some point, even if it, the fight yep. doesn't happen in part two. We we're expecting that ultimate showdown of some form with Cloud Sephiroth, and he said possibly even Zach. You know, the, the the team up we've been waiting for. How do you top? Like, yeah, how how insane do you have to beat that? And you have to beat the Advent Children fight. So it's like, what yep. are you gonna do? You have to you have to sort of top. And guess what? They've already done a pretty good job at taking the things that we were not expecting them to top and doing a Hell House situation. Mm -hmm. Of yeah, doing a honeybee in situation. No one no one thought that they would be able to handle the honeybee in in a tasteful way in 2020 and they destroyed it they killed it like it, it was fantastic yeah did you read that uh, much that less like the boss fights about and stuff, it so you read that article I, I, watch I that have, video i trust them you know sorry max did you see that article or video they put out about the behind the scenes of making the honeybee a in? little bit yeah that was the whole thing no uh i was asking if you're uh, if you're on this which side of the fence you're on uh release the the pole cut or not release the the pole cut oh cloud on a stripper pole yeah <laughs> That's pretty intense, man. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. wow, that goes that goes really far, really fast. I thought I even thought they go really far with what you know they have Cloud do even in 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 the Honeybee mm -hmm. existing. Oh yeah, but you know what? Like, I don't know if Fuck I wanted it. to see Cloud stripping. <laughs> like, yeah. some people definitely will. Would it have yeah. amplified sales? Most likely. <laughs> so you know what? Like, like, I'm 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 allowed. I think they should be allowed some creative freedom in these situations, and they and they showed that so far in the remake, mm -hmm. and I hope they express that going forward. You know, for sure. Yep. That's that's pretty much all I got, man. Uh, anything else? Or <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes my you, brain hurts. Yeah. 
I don't know if we'll, like, Max could We'll have this conversation nuts. again when when yeah. there's more to have conversation about. For sure. All right, man. Well, thanks for joining us, Max. Uh, once again for this uh, this reunion. Hopefully, the the we have another reunion not too long from now, as you said when we got new information about this. But uh, yeah, um, you have anything uh, coming up that you want to like give a shout out to to our audience to maybe check out or anything you're working on? I know you do those like Twitch rival stuff. I don't know if you have any, any of those coming up or anything like that. Yeah, in general, we've been working a lot with Twitch on some um, official Twitch Rivals fighting game events of, of classic fighting games and sort of bringing them back and putting them in the limelight. Um, but as usual, I'm like 80% like a fighting game streamer and play a huge variety of fighting games and old fighting games and new ones. So Guilty Gear is really exciting right now and a lot of people are loving it and I am too. And uh, yeah, I I definitely have some plans to uh, to tackle some games in the future. You know, uh, a new Metroid coming out is pretty exciting. And I'm somebody that has never played Super Metroid. Oh, I played very dang. little of it. Mm. So I'm looking forward to that being a, like a first time streaming experience and having, having everyone scream at me. Uh, it, it's going to be great. <laughs> But yeah, like uh, just in general, we have your video games on the weekends uh, on YouTube. I'm Maximilian underscore dude will uh, and I handle a lot of Final Fantasy seven remake news. We got a playthrough going on that just finished. And uh, yeah, I'm still going through the hard mode um, integrate playthrough. So just to check out all the visual differences and splendor and revisit all the story elements and, you know, how great the game looks now. So you can check that out at Twitch under the same name, uh, Maximilian underscore dude. Nice. I heard a rumor you're also going to play some game called Elden Ring at some point. There's a little game called Elden Ring <laughs> that at one point everyone thought mm -hmm. was not real and then suddenly became real. So, I uh, yeah, I think I think everyone's kind of excited for uh, Dark Souls 4. Dark Souls. Uh, yeah, we need to get you and uh, Brad together for that, man. Uh, <sighs> Can't wait. Yeah, oh. I, yeah, are you ready I gotta to get go find people at me, Max? <laughs> I do. Ready let's for me go. To break the big brain shit. I do. Let's nuts. go. I gotta find someone at Bandai Namco so that I can hopefully play this damn game before like January. <laughs> uh, thanks. To, uh, thank you as well, Brad, for joining me. Um, oh, my pleasure. About. Always a pleasure. But yeah. Um, until next time, everybody. You know, take it easy, and uh, we'll see you again in Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Three later. Spoiler mode, spoiler mode, final warning, spoiler mode, activated.